everyone. This is Sarah Elder, manager at the Remington Nature Center. And we, just like you, we are closed through April 24th and hopefully we'll be able to open up soon. And hopefully uh, you'll all be able to come see us as soon as we are open back up. But for now, we thought we would give you a virtual tour of just our natural history exhibits. We have a whole lot of other things going on down here, but we'll just take some time and, and give you a tour of our natural history exhibits. So come with me and we will check things out. So here is our mammoth. This is our woolly mammoth. She actually does have a name. Her name is Simbu. Now she is a reproduction. Obviously we don't have a real stuffed mammoth here but we have Simbu, she's the mama. And then down here, we have Remy. Remy is the baby. Now you say they are very similar to elephants, but much larger, and they are covered with a woolly hair. Now mammoths are, had a very strong, compact body. They had a massive stomach because they ate a large amount of food. Their tusks could be 16 feet long. They had four teeth that would um, shed, and it would be like six sets. So they'd have four teeth at a time, and then they'd shed, and they'd get some more grow in. Yeah, eventually Remy would get that big. They could live up to, scientists say, up to 60 years of age, and they actually were in North America and in Missouri. Now we'll look at one of our labels here. As you can see, the mammoths migrated across what was believed to be a land bridge from Asia across into Alaska and in the Arctic, and then they made their way down into North America. And uh, early man would follow the mammoth herds because they would eat the meat and use the bones and tusks to construct homes and lodges. So if you'll come around with me, we'll just come over here and see, this is our mammoth case, and I apologize for the reflection there. But these are actual, these are real mammoth bones. We've got a femur or the thigh bone, essentially, humerus kind of around the shoulder and the tibia. There's also the lower jaw back there in the back. We have a mammoth tooth here. There's a part of a tusk. Oh, and look, here's a baby mammoth tooth. We even have some hair. You can see how woolly and fuzzy that is. That's where it gets its name, the woolly mammoth. We also actually have a tusk. You can see how thick around it is and how long. This is kind of shorter, but they could get up to 16 feet long. There's another mammoth tooth. This was actually found in Holt County, Missouri. We also have some live animals here. Now these are mostly finches, look right over here. And then we've got another, the orange and black is cut, he's in, orange weaver bird. He's actually really pretty cool, but he's pretty much the dominant one in here. We do have some babies. They're young ones. We'll call them kind of teenagers that were born here in the aviary. And we may have some others. I think there may be some birds up there in the nest. But they also, all of these birds have a really pretty sound and it's really neat to listen to them throughout the day. We come around here and here is our aquarium. This aquarium is 7,000 gallons, filled with mostly fish that you would find in the Missouri River. Now they're kind of following me around because they think they're gonna get fed. And normally we feed them on Fridays. You just come over here. There's... Got some really cool fish. We actually do have a couple of fish that are not native to Missouri. We've got a koi and a goldfish. She's in there. If you can see the koi kind of in the back there, yeah, with the white with the black spots on him. There he is. Yeah, they kind of follow me around. We've got gars, catfish. And hopefully once we're open back up again, you can join us for our Friday fish feeding frenzy. We do that every Friday at 1030 in the morning. And we have people that help us cut up worms and we feed worms and minnows. Oh, there's the goldfish. There he is. Thank you. They get minnows. 
and they get worms, and they also get peas and corn, because a lot of the catfish like the corn. And if you're wondering what kinds of fish we have in here, this is a list. Common carp. We do have a couple of channel catfish in there. Some things about it. Then we'll just come on over here. We have a barbed wire display. This is what fencing used to be, and some fencing is still made up of. It's got different types used a lot during the 1800s and early 20th century. But you can see different types. Two strand, two lemur rows, three iron wire. Farmers would use this to keep cattle off cattle drives out of their land and then sometimes the cowboys would cut it because it would go across uh, cattle trails like the Chisholm Trail. But eventually cattlemen started putting up fencing too to keep their cattle from wandering. Now over here, we've got a gray wolf. We come down here, you can kind of see him through the glass just a little bit, see his face. These are really beautiful animals. And we'll hear what it sounds like. Now, the gray wolf is also known as the timber wolf, and they travel in packs, and sometimes the territories could range in size from 50 to 1,000 square miles. Now, once the gray wolf used to be all over North America, but unfortunately, in the early 1900s, the government actually, actually sponsored predator control programs, which led to the near extinction of the gray wolf. Now, they can hear sounds from almost six miles away, now they don't have very good eyesight, but they have an excellent sense of smell. And sometimes in reports and science seem to indicate that they can actually smell things that have just been through the area as long as three days ago. Up here, we've got a nice set of elk antlers. There's the picture of the elk. And if those of you are actually been going on a bear hunt, we have one here. So if you want to mark him down as being at the Remington Nature Center, you're welcome to. Now, black bears are the only bear that are uh, bear species, excuse me, that is native to Missouri, and they have disappeared. But if you look at the map here on our label, you can see that there is still some remnant of bears that can be found in southeast Missouri. Now, in a uh, short burst, they can run up to 35 miles an hour. And cubs are born, of course, during the wintertime when the bears go into hibernation, and they are born blind and completely helpless. And they actually remain with their mother for, through the next year. Up top, we've got some coyotes and a feral hog. If we come over this way, we've got some pheasants. This is a, these are ring-necked pheasants. Now, it's not native to North America, but was introduced in the 1800s from Asia and quickly pretty much established itself here in the area. They can be found in Northwest Missouri. And here's what they sound like. Of course, bobcat. Bobcat are very common in the area. You're like, more likely to see their tracks than you actually will see them. And then, of course, the deer.
and the wild turkey. I'm sure you all can make this noise without me having to play it, but we'll go ahead. Now that sound of the turkey gobble can travel up to one mile. Now this is a male and they're, they're called toms or tom turkeys. And over here's the female and the female's called a hen. Now over here on the upper side, we have a forest area, with raccoons, turtles, even got an otter. And yes, he's wearing a pair of glasses. That's just because we're kind of silly, but that's okay. He's still really cute. A little stream. And then that's not just a pile of sticks. Oh, we've got a snake right up there. This is actually a beaver dam. Oh, I've got a wood duck up there on top. And here we have the beavers in their home. Again, sorry about the reflection. Now beaver fur was very prized, especially in the 18th and 19th centuries. Their winter coat was very thick and could be very warm. So this is pretty much what the fur trade was after. They would take furs of most animals, but the fur traders and trappers would take the beaver to the point that beavers were hunted almost to extinction. In fact, Joseph Rubidoux, the founder of St. Joseph, was a fur trapper and trader, so he would have been involved with the beaver trade. Now the beaver furs would be trapped out here in the west and then sent back to cities like St. Louis and then points further east where the fur would be turned into a felt and then many times we turned into a hat, a beaver hat. And most of those were top hats, like the kinds of hats that Abraham Lincoln would wear. Here we have some sketches of beavers. Now this is a fun exhibit. I'm just gonna let it do its talking. Here we're gonna learn about some different tracks of different mammals in Missouri. You ever seen a footprint in the dirt and wondered what animal made it? As you work your way around this display, you will watch tracks of common Northwest Missouri mammals appear. This may help you identify the next track you come across. Although the striped skunk's scientific name, Mephitis, is from the Latin word for bad odor, the body and den of this animal has very little smell. Upon provocation, the skunk will emit a spray from scent glands beneath the tail that will deter most any predator. The spray is capable of hitting a target up to 20 feet away. Twice the size of a common house cat, the bobcat is an excellent hunter. Within a 20 square mile territory, bobcats will stalk, climb, swim, and leap to catch a wide variety of small mammals or even larger prey such as a weakened deer. They can jump as high as 8 feet vertically or 12 feet across to traverse their habitat or catch a meal. Raccoons are known to wash their food before consuming it. This tendency is reflected in its species name, loader, meaning a washer in Latin. This trait may account for why raccoons normally den within 1,000 feet of a permanent water source. Although they appear cute, Raccoons are one of the primary carriers of rabies, so caution is advised when you encounter them. The coyote is one of eight species of canis. This group includes wolves, jackals, and domestic dogs. Coyotes are often mistaken for a small German shepherd when seen from a distance. Pronunciation varies, but coyote, or te, most closely resembles the original Mexican-Spanish pronunciation. Beavers in Missouri may be found in and along streams, rivers, marshes, and small lakes. Where do most beavers live? If you said a lodge or dam, you're correct. Did you know that not all beavers live in lodges? Building lodges on rivers is impractical due to changing water levels and floods. Therefore, beavers along rivers often live in dens dug into the bank. A deer's eyes are located on the sides of its head, like many other prey animals, which allows for an increased field of view 
and helps the deer see predators sneaking up behind them. When it comes to running, don't let the spindly legs fool you. Deer can run up to 40 miles per hour and easily clear an eight foot fence. You may be familiar with the term play possum. This saying comes from the possum's survival adaptation of playing dead when threatened. Its first line of defense includes running, eliminating waste, and vocalizing growls and belches. If these tactics do not deter the threat, the possum will roll over, stiffen its entire body, drool, and slow its breathing to simulate a dead or almost dead state. Now, these displays here are more about the different types of animals you'll find in Missouri forests and Missouri prairie. So we'll go around, I'll show you the pictures first. It's got butterflies and squirrels. These are the wetlands. And then we'll play and see, and it'll light up some of the animals and we'll see if we can find them and you can hear how they sound. Let's find the muskrat. Muskrats and beavers are the only mammals that build their homes in the water. They also build several small feeding mounds called push-ups where they can sit and eat in safety. When environmental situations are right, muskrats are prolific breeders and can spread very rapidly. Females have been known to produce as many as 45 kits in a single year. There's even a muskrat that lives out here on our pond. What else do we have over here? Oh, how about a bullfrog? The bullfrog is Missouri's largest frog. Easily disturbed during the day, bullfrogs escape with powerful jumps that can cover distances up to six feet in length. When fully submerged, bullfrogs close their nostrils and absorb oxygen through their skin. So these are some of the things that you'd see in the wetlands, where there's more water around. This is where we're going to see in the prairies. And you see the change in the maps of Missouri prairies? Now, Buchanan County was mostly tall grass prairie, and that was in the 1800s. You can see all this red spot here. Those were all prairies. Today, there's not much, if any. Most of the prairie, natural prairie or native prairie, has been plowed under. But these are some of the animals here that you could have found in the prairies. And again, I apologize for the reflection, but let's see what we've got here about a prairie chicken. <laughs> Prairie chickens are often associated with their booming. During mating season, males gather on booming grounds and perform elaborate dances and calls to attract mates. Females have been found to avoid nesting grounds within one-fourth mile of power lines and one-third of a mile of modern roadways. Okay, and what about a round-winged katydid? Let's see here. There they are. Katydids belong to the grasshopper family. The pink katydid is a delightful prairie enigma known only to occur on a few of Missouri's prairies. The round-winged katydid is normally green but can be pink or tan. And finally, see the forest. And you can see also the Missouri forest in the 1800s, a lot of forestry up here in Buchanan County, mostly gone, although there's a few today, where most of it is down here in the southeast part of the state. So we come around here, and these are animals that you would find in the forest. Let's see about an oven bird. The oven bird gets its name from its covered nest. The dome top and side entrance of this grassy forest floor nest make it resemble a Dutch oven. It seems quite fitting that a group of oven birds is known as a stew. And let's see what else we've got. Oh, how about a bald-faced hornet? 
There it is. Bald-faced hornets are actually not a true hornet at all, but rather a type of wasp, also called a yellow jacket. They build large pendant nests made out of gray pulp, which is chewed up wood, cardboard, and paper that the workers form into the outside of the nest. Adults are extremely protective of the nest and will sting repeatedly if disturbed. So those are some of the animals, birds, creatures that you would find in the forest. Now one more thing before we go. <clears throat> We have a lot of different pictures of things that are Missouri State. Did you know there's a Missouri State fossil? It's called a crinoid. Now the crinoid is a mineralization of an animal, which means it's kind of been turned to stone. And because of its plant-like appearance, it used to be called the sea lily. It was once in an ocean that once covered uh, the state of Missouri. The Missouri State rock is Mozarkite. The Missouri State Mineral is Galena. And then we have some more Missouri State things over here, like the Missouri State Dinosaur. How many of you knew that there was a Missouri State Dinosaur? So we'll come head over here. There he is. The Hips Bema. And that's what we think they probably did look like. There's also the Missouri State Reptile, which is the three-toed box turtle the Missouri State Amphibian, it's the American Bullfrog, let's back out a little bit, the Missouri State Mule, which is the, excuse me, the Missouri State Animal, which is the Missouri Mule. We even have a grape called the Norton Grape. I love Norton Grapes, they are so good. The State Game Bird is the Bobwhite Quail. Now you'll probably see a lot of these because they do come out and bud in springtime. This is the Missouri State tree called the flowering dogwood. The Missouri State bird is the bluebird. The state insect is the honeybee and honeybees are starting to come out now and they're finding all sorts of animal, or excuse me, animals, I'm so sorry, plants and flowers that they can pollinate. The state floral is the white hawthorn the state horse is the fox trotting horse. And of course, the state fish is the channel catfish. So that's just some of the things that we have here in our natural history displays. See, there's some of the hornet's nests up there. Got a turkey flying as well. So that's some of our natural history exhibits. I well, hope you enjoyed this, and we hope that you will be able to come and see us as soon as we're back open. I hope you've enjoyed this, and hopefully it will maybe spark some interest for you to find out some more things about animals and birds and just nature in our part of the, of the state of Missouri. Everybody have a great day. Stay safe, and we'll hope to see you soon. Bye-bye.